All right, guys, welcome to an all new Jake It On Me. In this episode of Jake It On Me, I will Jake It On You. Um, just kidding. But in all seriousness, we are going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts Melody and Memories. So, a little precursor to this um, I haven't played it. Um, I don't own the game yet for Switch nor PS4. Um, I've been debating. I'm going to get it eventually just to play it to play it because Kingdom Hearts. Um, but I was debating on spoiling myself for the story or if I should wait and get it and play it clean. Um, after I was told that there was like barely 20 minutes worth of original cutscenes, I was like, okay, you know, whatever, I'll spoil myself. If it's barely 20 minutes of, of original story elements, original story cutscenes, original advancements to the plot, I'll spoil myself. I'll still get the game eventually, especially since I will be playing it purely for the sake of playing it as a rhythm game later on. We'll get it when the price is down. I don't really care to pay $60 for a rhythm game. You know, maybe like 30 like maybe 30 So, you know, I'll get it when the time when the time comes. Because Kingdom Hearts games are barely full price for three months. And then, boom, they, they suck. So, but this game. So I watched, I watched the 25 minutes, 20, 20, 24 minutes and 18 seconds worth of original cutscenes earlier this morning. And to be completely honest, not half bad. Like, I was, see, Kingdom Hearts games, especially Kingdom Hearts spinoffs, are very weird, because I actually, I've made multiple videos talking about Kingdom Hearts spinoffs, and what qualifies a spinoff, gameplay-wise, plot-wise, you need to play the spin, you need to watch, like, do you need to watch spinoff movies to know the main stuff? Like, Star Wars is a fantastic example, because... Kingdom Hearts, kind of the way that it's built, is very similar to Star Wars. Like, they, they, they made a couple games that were, like, the original sets. And then they went back and made prequel. They made two prequel games, or they technically made, well, three prequel games, now that I think about it. Um, and then and then we have sequel games, uh, just like the sequel trilogy in Star Wars. So, um, as far as, like, the setting of Kingdom Hearts goes, it's pretty pr pretty basic to think of it like, like Star Wars, um, where you have, like, the original trilogy games, prequel trilogies, and a sequel trilogy. Although, I'm not sure. I guess this would be considered one of the sequel, one of the ones in the sequel trilogy. Uh, so, anyways, I say that to mean that unlike the Star Wars movies, how, like, episode... Uh, four, five, and six are all are all kind of mandatory to watch. They show you the progression of Luke becoming a Jedi, of Darth Vader uh, dying and, and losing. Um, they show you this this pretty important progression. But with Kingdom Hearts games, it's like, for example, the original trilogy of Kingdom Hearts games is Kingdom Hearts One, Chain of Memories, and Kingdom Hearts Two. A lot of people say Chain of Memories is pointless. You don't need to play it. I would argue you do need to play it. Because it's a direct sequel to Kingdom Hearts 1 and happens right before Kingdom Hearts 2. It's pretty important because Kingdom Hearts 2 does not pick up where Kingdom Hearts 1 leaves off. Um, there's there's a there's a year time gap which Chain of Memories explains. Chain of Memories was created first as well. So like if you played them as they released, you were playing Kingdom Hearts 1. Then you got a GBA and played Kingdom Hearts uh, Chain of Memories. And then you played Kingdom Hearts 2, presumably also with the re-Chain of Memories uh, 3D remake for the PS2 in, in, in the disc as well. So... Um, so that's what I say when I mean, like, Kingdom Hearts spinoffs are very weird, because unlike Star Wars, where it's like, hey, these three movies are equally relevant, it's no, here are these equally relevant trilogies, but, um, like, only, only one game in this trilogy matters, or only two games in this trilogy matters, or only, like, half of the story in this one game in this one trilogy matters, and then this trilogy game connects to that trilogy game, it's a lot more convoluted, um, so in context, I say that all to mean that in context of Melody and Memories, Melody of Memories is really basic. It's, I mean, like, it's it's normal, which scares me, because Nomura now knows what he's doing. <laughs> or at least with me Melody of Memory, I should say. People call it Melody of Memories, and I see that all the time, but it's technically Melody of Memory, which is so weird. Um, I'm going to keep calling it Memories, but anyways, or M-O-M. Mama. But, uh... So yeah, so what exactly happens in the 25 minutes worth of, of Kingdom Hearts MOM? So Kyrie wakes up in the final world, which is not the final world, but it's one of the last worlds that, that you go to in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's where Sora goes after he dies to kind of recollect his, his, his body, his spirit, to, to come back to life eventually, or essentially. And then boom, he's resurrected. Um, and then he does the whole final boss again because time shenanigans. And uh, so he redoes all the all the bosses, I guess, 
or he saves his friends after he collects himself quite literally um and then boom uh final boss again so yeah eventually i mean essentially you die and then you go to the final world and then after the final world you do the whole thing again the final world is just like this really weird heaven looking like place which is funny because you have uh scala at kylum which is latin i should know this i took latin for eight years for stairway to heaven um so the final world looking like a heaven-esque place um is quite it's quite described mm -hmm. as as a heaven-esque place later in this video um this is by pal dump by the way so props to him thank you for posting these um it's described as a heaven-like place where people who die this is where their hearts go which is so weird um so I, I, frankly i kind of think this might be kingdom hearts like this might be what kingdom hearts is but you never know really you never know uh, it's this we've had we I, I think we're almost at 20 plus games in the series something like that and uh we still don't know what kingdom hearts is so uh yeah so anyways Kyrie ends up here in the final world uh, where she has a flashback scene tune it down a little bit of being kidnapped the heartless are chasing her in the garden and then she is kidnapped by um uh apprentice xehanort uh terra Ter basically when he's still working as an apprentice and this seems to be before the destruction of radiant garden so this is all this know, world basically under the authority not authority but it's all under the rule of Ansem, who I'm sure doesn't know about it. Will be engulfed in dark. But this is really interesting. What what Xehanort says here, because in Kingdom Hearts three, they've changed Xehanort's um, drive, his motive in the series at least twice, maybe three times. And so this is kind of like, okay, this is him explaining his big master plan to baby Kyrie here for no reason. So what's what 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 is he trying to do <laughs> this time? Darkness. So let's let's watch this. Everything you care about and everyone you love. If you truly possess the power of a princess of heart, your heart will resonate with the Keyblade wielders, and I believe you can lead me to that wielder's world. That is the only possible way to save ours. You see, this is more than an experiment. It's hope. Like most, you probably believe that nothing exists outside of this world you live in. I'm getting real philosophical. For and yet, world. there are countless other worlds. You can see them sparkle brilliantly in the night sky. Through that sea of stars, fate will guide your ship to where you are meant to be. However, if you arrive in a world that's neither of light nor darkness, but somewhere on the other side, your task will be far from easy. If that happens, you must abandon your search. We have failed. Okay, so that's pretty important. Um, like, that's that's really important. So, of course, this is young Master Xehanort as a evil apprentice talking to this four or five year old girl so i don't think everything he's saying is like entirely truthful like this whole thing of like our world is about to die our only hope is for you to find a keyblade wielder like i don't think apprentice xehanort actually cares for radiant garden especially in context of what radiant garden looks like in kingdom hearts one than being hollow bastion um so i i don't think a whole lot of this is like quite literal i don't think he's like Kyrie you must find the Keyblade Wielder for the sake of saving Radiant Garden. It's purely, we know what Young Master Xehanort is doing here. He's reached, He is researching um, the Heartless, which leads him to basically run amok with them, turns the whole Hollow Bastion world, um, it, it basically becomes the home base of the whole Heartless. Um, so I don't, I, I, I genuinely don't think he's like trying to prevent eco-terrorism here and, and trying to save his world, especially too, because if he's like, our world is about to be engulfed in darkness, when quite literally in this scene right here, where he kidnaps Kyrie, see, all those heartless are just kind of chilling with him, you know? 
I probably wouldn't say he's commanding them, but they, I mean, like, they're not attacking him like they kind of were in Kyrie. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I don't find this as a kind of like, oh, Xehanort's actually trying to be a good guy. No, he's not. He's, he's, he's kidnapped a girl to do research with Keyblades and Princesses of Heart um, and to see their relationship with, with Heartless from what we've been told before in the reports and stuff like that. He's not. He's, he's, he's not any type of a good guy. He's not trying to do anything good right here. Um, I think this is just him trying to <laughs> explain to Kairi um, what he's doing to get her on his side. Um, now, this quote right here is one that's really interesting. Um, it's, it's actually what the entirety of the game is built on. Like, it's referenced multiple times throughout the cutscenes, throughout the other 20, <laughs> quite literally 20 minutes of cutscenes. Um, so, Apprentice Zaynort is saying, listen, I'm going to basically send you out into some random world to find a Keyblade Wielder. Um, now, if you end up in a world that is of light or of darkness, or excuse me, if you do not end up in a world that is of light and darkness, um, but somewhere else on the other side, he calls it, then you're stuck. You know, screw you. You're, you're kind of stuck. Just give up um, and die. Um, he's like, yeah, you, you need to go to a place that's within the realm of light or the realm of darkness is, is the way that I'm hearing this and reading this, is that you need to go to a world that is of light or of darkness, which makes me think realm of light and realm of darkness, because we know that the worlds that are in the realm of light are like all the good worlds, they're all the worlds that are still safe, and all the worlds that are in the realm of darkness are all the worlds that have been eaten by Heartless, they have been captured, taken, overrun, they're basically just destroyed. Um, and of darkness, which is the description here. So I could totally be wrong, but it seems like what he's saying is if you do not end up in the realm of light or in the realm of darkness, then you are screwed. And there are two other realms that we can think of. There's the realm of nothingness, where quite literally nothing exists. The world that never was was there. Twilight Town was there for a while. Um, I want to say Yin Sid's tower was there, but I could be wrong. It could have been moved. Um, but I know that the world that never was in Twilight Town are there, or at least the world that never was was there. He could be in the realm of darkness right now. Um, but as of the time of when he's telling her this, um, Twilight Town and the world that never was, presuming it, it pre-existed before the nobodies, um, are, are in the realm of nothingness. And then there's the realm of sleep, um, which is where all the worlds that have been swallowed by Heartless, they kind of go metaphysically. Um, and then if you if you save them there before the Dream Eaters kind of finish them off, then, then you're good. It's weird. The realm of sleep's weird. So, so I can think of two other places. Um, aside from the realm of light or aside from the realm of darkness, I can name two other places um, where Kyrie could have ended up being in the realm of nothingness or the realm of sleep. Realm of Sleep probably wasn't going to be a thing, because in order to access the Realm of Sleep, there seems to be very specific conditions how to even enter or exit. Um, in the Realm of Nothingness too, the only way that I believe people have traveled there, uh, predominantly in Kingdom Hearts 2, were through those portals that the nobodies could make. I don't think anyone went there through ship. Uh, it was mostly through, through portals and stuff. Um, so if you want to find excuses to exclude those two, you can. Because, yeah, there's there's only certain ways you can enter the realm of sleep. Um, and then depending on where the world um, that never was is, um, then there's only certain ways you can enter there. Now, Twilight Town's kind of an exception. Uh, for a while in Kingdom Hearts 2, you can enter and leave Twilight Town, um, even though it's in the realm of nothingness um, and stuff like that. So... The big question is, what is Xehanort talking about? That's that's kind of what the whole game is built up on. What is he talking about? If it's not, it's obviously not the realm of light and the realm of darkness, uh, but somewhere on the other side, which I presume could be the realm of sleep or the realm of nothingness. I would venture to say the realm of nothingness more, more than anything. But so it's this huge thing that the whole game is built upon, and we'll kind of get back to it later. One thing I did want to talk about is, first of all, Kyrie's ability to just fly is really weird. <laughs> and it's sad because I saw this post actually in Kingdom Hearts 1, you know, where Sora is like, I flew, I actually flew. I can't wait to tell Kyrie. He never did, presumably, unless he talked to her in the three minutes he was back home in Kingdom Hearts 2. 
Um, he never did. He, he, he never got to tell her that, that he flew. But she just does. She just gets up and flies right here. Yeah. <laughs> so she can do that. Uh, but the other thing I was going to talk about is her fight against Xehanort. Really here. And this is just a memory. I set you up. Let's actually get to it. Sora's disappeared. Yeah, like this, this right here. You've become quite the Keyblade wielder. Sure. Yeah. For a retired master, yes, it prepared you remarkably well. Yep, that's right. People have talked about like Keyblade regeneration so many times. I mean, because it's it's doable. It, they they do it all the time in gameplay. It's clearly a thing. And in cutscenes too, people just summon their Keyblades. But then there are scenes where like Keyblades are stuck or thrown away somewhere and the the wielder just can't materialize it back in their hands and it's so weird because it's like why can't you do that you've you've always been able to do that just 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 materialize it just just bring it back um i think one of the few times it's actually done that's relevant in cutscenes is when roxas fights sora in kingdom hearts 2 um roxas kind of has sora pinned down and sora's just kind of like all right you got me but then he summons his keyblade and hits roxas and wins um that's like one of the few lore times I can think of where it's relevant. Um, but yeah, so like, it's kind of been funny because like, as a kid, you know, talking, thinking about Kingdom Hearts, it's always been like, why don't they just rematerialize their weapons and just bring their weapons back? Well, Kyrie does. She uses that technique like five times. Look at Xander, we just saw it once there. She'll do it again. Yeah, she'll do it again right here. This world was created from the memories contained within your heart. You seek clues to Sora's whereabouts by using your memories of him to search through your own heart. But there's nothing for you to find here. I'm afraid the answer you seek lies in memories that are long gone. <laughs> and she materialized. Like, people have been talking about how, like, Kyrie is, like, not developed really well. And quite honestly, I agree. She's not. At least the character that they try to develop her in, her as, up to Kingdom Hearts 2 is really poor. Kingdom Hearts 3, they still kind of, you know, give her the boot. She's not really important. So Melody of Memory was really her time to shine. So two things. One, her training as a Keyblade Wielder is great. I'm all for it. Two, she seems to be like a hardcore activist now, which is really weird because she's always stricken me, struck me as someone who's more passive um, and like likes to sit back and kind of like soak in the moment and kind of like realize how stuff is going on. The only time I recall her actually charging forward at something was when um, Sora was um, being engulfed by Heartless in the world that never was in Kingdom Hearts 2 and she jumps off the balcony to try and save him. Um, and that's really it. Uh, and even then, like, they handle that moment really well, too, because Riku's there and everything. So I'll say I really like her fighting and her fighting style. Um, but her, her her drive and motivation seems a little out of place for her character. That's just me. It's not that big a deal. It, I really don't care. Um, but if, I, if we're going to critique everything about Kairi's character, about the bad things that, that don't work, I have to... Or about the good things that do work, I have to critique the things that I'm like, huh, weird, but okay. It's not that big a deal. Um, the other thing that Xehanort said was that this place, the final world, is made of, um, of her memories. This world. Yeah. This world was created from the memories contained within your heart. So my question is, is the final world being the place that Sora visits in Kingdom Hearts 2, or 3, I'm sorry, at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, is the final world, this heaven-like place that Kyrie is in, is it just Kyrie's memories? Is it a physical world embodiment of Kyrie's memories? Because if so, 
I can get behind the idea of like, oh, when Kyrie was killed because she's a princess of heart, just her memories made this huge world where it's like memories like sure weird i can see why but maybe maybe xehanort means you're able to access this world from the memories contained within your heart like that that i get behind a little bit more um but like the origin of this world he says this world was created from the memories contained within your heart so like uh, when 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 sora got his memories um drained from him and kind of contained to make Shion, when Naminé was doing that to him in Chain of Memories, could the organization have been like, "Hey, let's let's make a whole world with his memories"? Like, I'm, I'm, functionality is what I'm questioning here. How does this world exist by her memories? I was fine with just saying, "Oh, it exists," and being done with it, but they're trying to explain the origin of it, and I'm confused as to how that works, um, especially later. Oh, and this too, this whole Sora coming to life thing. I understand like Sora's heart reaching out and trying to help Kyrie. I get that. But how does she become Kyrie? Or how does she become Sora? That's a whole other thing. I think that's kind of a thing that you just have to play the game to understand through gameplay semantics, which is fine. It's it's whatever. Um And then there's like 50 Xehanorts that appear for a second, and then they all gather around. And then Kyrie meets with Riku, and Riku's like, Hey, I got a hint about Sora's whereabouts. Riku woke up one day and had a dream about Sora being in um, the, the the place in Remind where you're uh, fighting, what's his name, uh, Yazora. Um, Riku had that dream or whatever where Sora was in that city. And then Kyrie, of course, is having this whole thing with, with Xehanort and the final world. Um, and then, boom, the fairy godmother comes in, and she's like, okay, so to find Sora, because somehow she knows this, to find Sora, we need three things. We need Riku's dream, which, check, sure. Kairi's memories, check, sure. And something else. And so they're like, oh, what could this be? And so as I was watching this, I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, uh, Riku's dream is is very connected to Sora because Riku was actually in Sora's dreams and then they were in, in each other's dreams. It was a huge inception moment in Dream Drop Distance. I get that. I understand that. Um, and then the whole memory thing of Kairi. Kairi has tons of memories of Sora. So yeah, that's going to link because chains of memories actually affect the way people remember you. I get that. I'm on board. Sure. So this third thing, I was like, okay, dreams are kind of like memories that are back in the heart stuff like that back in the mind whatever the um uh, entomology of a, of a human being is in kingdom hearts dreams dreams are a thing sure memories are obviously a thing and so i was thinking okay they probably need some some something to resemble his body like roxas i was like you know roxas is floating around in his um puppet thing that he's that he's controlling in twilight town presumably um so sure, yeah, uh, they're probably going to get Roxas. They don't get Roxas. They get the nameless star that Sora talks to in Kingdom Hearts 3, which I think we all are in agreement that it's Streletzia. Because mm -hmm. even in Streletzia, they were like, oh, yeah, someone killed me. And in, in this game, Streletzia was like, oh, yeah, someone killed me. <laughs> and then the fairy godmother was like, oh, yeah, you lost your form a while back ago, which... Streletzia, unless it's Scold some way, somehow. Um, I don't remember what happened to Scold. I think her story is still kind of going on in the mobile games. But currently, Streletzia fits that um, motive a lot more, especially considering, too, that somehow Axel slash Lee and Isa know one of the girls that was kidnapped. Not Streletzia, but I think it was someone else. Or maybe it was Streletzia. I can't remember. At this rate, uh, but they know one of the kidnapped girls that Xehanort had, um, so maybe it's that person if the, if that's not Streletzia. But uh, they they need to find this 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 third thing, um, which they get to like right right here. Um, and these these stars are weird. Like in in Kingdom Hearts three, all these nameless stars that Sora talks to. Some of them are, are references to Disney characters. A few of them, I think two or three of them are. A lot of them are just depressing. Like, I think one of them talked about having an abortion. Um, I think one of them mentioned suicide, but I could be totally, totally off. I, I do strongly recall one talking about abortion, though, or at least the loss of a child. Maybe not abortion. Um, 
But Fairy Godmother points out the, the one nameless star that had voice acting that wasn't Naminé. Um, and then they were like, ah, oh, yeah, um, we need you to help us find Sora. And the star was like, ah, oh, Sora, I know who that is. He was here too. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so um, they're, they're going to use the name the star some way, somehow, to, to find Sora. I can't remember if they turn the star into a portal. They do something. They, they, they just whip out a portal, and Riku's like, okay, I'm going to go there. Uh, but the other thing is the fairy godmother explains what kind of place this is. Yeah, so the fairy godmother says, yes, strong hearts gather here after death until they are ready to move on. They made purgatory. <laughs> Basically, or heaven, I guess if you well, no, it kind of fits better uh, mechanically speaking, works better as, as purgatory. So they made purgatory. So my question is, Xehanort earlier said this world, this place was made up of your memories. So I I have to ask, did Kyrie make purgatory, or is this a world that has pre-existed since the dawn of time? And kind of acts as like a bridge between different realities and different realms. Because like technically that's what the realms are. They're different types of realities where all these different worlds live in. They're kind of like, they're not realities, I should say. They're not realities. They're like dimensions or different galaxies. They're, they're like different galaxies. And that's what that works best as. Um, and this world, the final world, kind of acts like the, the overarching lore thing that connects the reality that we know as Kingdom Hearts from the four different realms to a different type of reality with the Quadratum place where Yazora is um, that looks like Shibuya or Tokyo or whatever. But yeah, so she's like, yeah, strong hearts gather here after death until they are ready to move on. So we know why Sora went there because he's got a strong heart. He died. So he went there after he died in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, so, um, but the question is, because, like, Sora disappears at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, I mean, he disappears twice in Kingdom Hearts 3. He disappears once, once they all die, and then he ends up in the final world, and he has to bring everyone back. He does that once. But then after all that, um, he uses the power of waking um, during the fight, or he uses the power of waking during that whole thing, during the whole thing of trying to bring back himself and trying to bring back other people. He uses the power, the power of waking which basically kills him again at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. He just disappears um, as he's chilling there with Kyrie. Um, so the question is, did Sora go back here? Because he was already here once. After he used the power of waking, did he go here or did he just go straight to the Quadratum? Um, but yeah, so essentially from this tidbit here, did Kyrie make purgatory is kind of the important question. Um, and then they, they use Streletsia... Who I assume it is. I assume it's Streletsia. Um, they they use Streletsia as a portal. Riku goes through, and then that's the last we see of Riku. Um, so it's kind of like, whoa, okay. Uh, so that's probably what the Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to be, or whatever the next spinoff is. Riku going to try and find Sora. Mm, excuse me. So meanwhile, Kairi goes to Yen Sid, Mickey, and the rest of the gang, and... Um, Kyrie explains the, the situation, and then so um, about the final world and all of that, and about the other side that Xehanort said. So Yin Sid is like, ah, oh, yes, the ancient Keyblade wielders um, were related or connected to this other world. Um, you will find answers at Scala Ad Kylum. Go there. Um, and then boom, the game ends. Is, is Yin Sid telling these four people, or no, 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 no. He gives them... Bring his time. He must have been aware. But. Hmm. When I was still serving as masters, had crossed over into another world. Okay, well, duh. I surmise that Xehanort looked more deeply into that. Okay, so I don't know why they're calling it world here, because, like, Twilight Town and Radiant Garden are different worlds. People world hop all the time. It's supposed to be this big thing where it's like, ah, oh, you shall not mess with the affairs of other worlds. They do it all the time. It's It, it does not matter. Um, but yeah, Yin Sid is like, oh yeah, when I was a Keyblade wielder, we talked all the time about ancient masters that would move from world to world. And then apparently maybe maybe Xehanort was looking uh, for this other world 
which isn't what he was talking about in the beginning here when he was in the, in the flashback scene with Kyrie. In the beginning here, he was talking about trying to save Radiant Garden, which again, I don't think he was being legit about. Uh, we know that he's studying Heartless and he was using the Princesses of Heart to do that, or he was stu studying Kingdom Hearts particularly. And he found some connection between the Heartless and, and Kingdom Hearts. So he studied the Heartless, which led him to the Princesses of a Heart, which boom, uh, here. So, um... The ancient Keyblade Masters! Which is Ephemir Skulls, yeah. For now, we must reach out to those... In okay, to those of Radiant Garden, which is the rest of the organization cast that are good, and basically just the scientists. Uh, the Land of Departure crew is BBS. Twilight Town is, um, it is the Days crew. Shion, Axel, and, um, and uh, Shion, Axel, Roxas, maybe Namine, uh, but also with Pence, um, Hainer, and Olet. In Radiant Garden, the Land so of saying, Departure, okay, and Twilight Town, who are searching for Sora to inform them of what we have learned yep. and have them halt their respective efforts. Donald? Goofy, okay. I leave so it's Donald and Goofy's mission uh, to go basically update everyone. This to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Kyrie, will you continue? Oh yeah, your this was cool. I was actually really happy. As you this. were before. Actually, I'd like to study under Master Aqua. That is an excellent idea. I I'm surprised approve. that hasn't happened already. That's... Thank you. Mwah. Good and job. you, Mickey. Yes. I task you with the investigation of this new world and how it is related to the so ancient. So Mickey is supposed to go uh, find the connection between the ancient Keyblade wielders, which I assume are the Dandelions. If it's not the Dandelions, then it's the uh, not tribe. It's the um, whatever leaders. Um, the the the. Capricorn people, you know, the, the ones with the mascot, the foretellers, the foretellers. So it's either the dandelions or the foretellers that Mickey has to go investigate and how they relate to the other world, which, which is either Quadratum or the final world. I assume it's Quadratum. So, which probably means we're going to get some Quadratum stuff in, uh, Chi, uh, Unchained Chi, Unchained Key, whatever version of the game is going on right now. Um, Keyblade and then he masters. says something about Scala and Kylum. But how? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, but how? And he's like, you should go start with Scala and Kylum. So, and that's the game. That's 20, 24 and a half minutes of, of cutscenes of actual relevant story information. Um, so, yeah, basically, some things to note is um, the final world is important for the sake of being important. Just because Kingdom Hearts 3 was this huge mess where they tried to fit in 20 plus hours of lore plot holes into three hours of like the final game um so kingdom Hearts 3 is already a mess let's get past that point but as far as like fixing it goes and untangling it Me melody of memories does a really good job i mean it, it does it's very basic very like okay this this game is purely to set up something else it's it's purely a stepping stool it's not really i mean it is a direct sequel to kingdom Hearts 3 but it's not a sequel in the sense of like what chain of memories was to um to kingdom hearts one it's more like recoded how recoded is technically a sequel to kingdom hearts 2 um even though it recoded affects everything else it barely touches kingdom hearts 3 to be completely honest kingdom hearts 3 doesn't reference recoded a whole lot um unfortunately because recoded is just a waste of time but uh, melody i'm very pleased with what they did in melody of memories um the whole I, I do kind of, because here's the thing, like I said earlier, you know, with the game being real short and sweet with 25 minutes worth of cutscenes, it's very hard to mess that up. And they didn't. They kept it very simple, very basic, very safe. Um, but now I'm kind of left wanting more, uh, which is a good thing, which is a sign of a good thing. Because if I was, if I watched this and was completely distasted, uh, then boom, you, you kind of failed your product. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm left interested everything basically made sense i'm just curious as to how Kyrie made purgatory um and then i'm interested uh, to see what uh how Kyrie's um training under aqua goes how riku and quadratum works um uh, mickey basically following riku trying to figure out the the four tether or dandelion connection to quadratum slash the final world 
uh, Goofy and Donald are supposed to go update everyone else and what's happening. So a lot of this makes sense, and I'm on board with it, which is very shocking, uh, but I'm, I'm down. So video was a little bit longer than I expected it to be or really wanted it to be, but uh, I kind of feel like I went, everything, went over everything that I really wanted to. Um, I'm totally down for Kyrie being really skilled with her Keyblade and using it wisely. She doesn't just swing and hack and slash. She She's very smart and um, uh, not intelligent. What's the word? Um, in, in, in Intentional with how she uses her Keyblade, which I'm very much a fan of. Um, but yeah, I am i don't really have any like strong complaints. Um, it's uh, I, I don't even have any light complaints either. Very good. It makes sense. I'm on board. Um, not paying $60 for it maybe 25 um just to play it of course so yeah well anyway guys thanks for watching this is jake um i forgot my usual outro but thanks for watching peace